We're stopping here because one of the most important figures in the history of American sports, the history of American sports, got his uh, start right here at this spot. Um, young uh, young man, Maurice Podoloff. Morris Podoloff was born to a Jewish family um, in what was then Russia, what is now central uh, Ukraine, on uh, August 18, 1890. And as a, as a young boy, uh, he and his family uh, emigrated uh, to New Haven um, as so many other Eastern European Russian Jews did. I think two, two and a half million Jews came to to, uh, to America during the, year, the years between 1881 and mm. 1920. Uh, Morris grew up here in New Haven. He went to Hill House High School, went on to uh, win scholarships at Yale University where he did his undergrad and also went to law school. And in 1926, he partnered with his brother Nathan and their father, Abraham, on a Jewish family business. They built the New Haven Arena on this site here at Orange and Wall Streets. And soon it became the leading venue in New Haven for hockey, for basketball, for boxing, for wrestling, for all kinds of sporting events and hosted the American Hockey League, uh, the New Haven Eagles from 1936 to 1951. It hosted the New Haven Blades of the Eastern Hockey League from 1954 to 1972. It hosted Yale Hockey for about 30 years uh, from 1927 to 1959. It is also famous for its musical events. Some of you may have attended a musical event here. I'm not, I'm not sure, but the Rolling Stones played here, the Kinks, Bob Dylan, the Doors, Joan Baez, the Supremes, the T Temptations, all of the great music icons uh, of mid-century, mid-20th century of concerts here at the arena until it was replaced as New Haven's premier concert uh, per performance venue uh, by the New Haven Coliseum in 1973. Some of you may know Jim Morrison story. He was arrested here mid-performance in December 1967 by New Haven police. Famous mugshot. Did he expose himself uh, on stage? Did he do something else? We don't know. It is lost in the, the sands of, of time. There uh, differing stories, shall we say. But what we, we do know for sure is that uh, the arena was one of these very important uh, social spaces in New Haven where you uh, have different ethnic groups, different religious groups coming together and inter intermingling while they, um, they enjoy themselves uh, and, and participate in, uh, in entertainment and, and social occasions and, and, and festivities. And that's also a big theme of uh, Walking New Haven cultural heritage tours is how these groups are brought together and what are the social spaces and the conditions and circumstances under which they're they're brought together. But back to Morris Podoloff. So Podoloff was serving, he was already serving as the president of the American Hockey League, okay, in the 1940s, when in 1946 he was tapped to be president of the American Basketball Association, which later became the NBA, the NBA, the National Basketball Association. So he became the only man to ever serve as the president of two different professional sports leagues simultaneously. Okay, He went on to uh, serve as the president of the NBA for 17 years. From 1946 to 1963, he introduced a number of important innovations, including the 24-second shot clock. Okay, That was Morris Podoloff, the shot clock. The collegiate draft, Okay, that was, that was his idea. And to this day, the winner uh, of the Most Valuable Player Trophy in the National Basketball Association that you know, LeBron James or Steph Curry wins every year, that is called the Morris Podoloff Trophy. Okay, so uh, Morris is in both the American Hockey League Hall of Fame, he's in the NBA, the Naismith Hall of Fame in Springfield, Mass, as well as the American Jewish uh, Sports Hall of Fame and he died in 1985 at the age of 95. So the uh, remarkable career of this uh, New Haven Jewish uh, personality started here at this site. Uh, just one other thing I wanted to mention. We are literally standing on top of what was uh, 175 years ago a canal. We would literally be in the canal right now. Uh, this is the Farmington 
uh, Farmington Canal, which was the most important infrastructure project, as we would say today. This was the most important infrastructure project in 19th century New Haven, which was transformative uh, for Connecticut in the same way the Erie Canal was transformative for, for New York and rocketed New York City into the, to the foremost of, of American cities. Uh, I could go on for many, many hours about the importance, the significance of the Farmington Canal in, in New Haven history. Again, that is another tour, but I did just want to mention two things. One is about Irish immigration. Many people um, assume that the first Irish immigrants to New Haven came in the 1840s because of the potato famine. Many of them did, but actually the first Irish immigrants to New Haven came in the 1820s to build the Farmington Canal. So that is when we first see an Irish Catholic uh, settlement population in New Haven. And they actually settled in a neighborhood called, called Slinyville, which is in Worcester Square. If you look at our Worcester Square tour, um, we talk about Slinyville, which is the first Irish Catholic um, settlement area in New Haven. And then the other thing I, I just wanted to mention about the canal, um, which is now a trail. Has anybody ridden their bike on the Farmington Canal? It's an absolutely wonderful trail that runs all the way to Massachusetts. You can ride your bike all the way to the Massachusetts border. It's absolutely fabulous trail. It is the crown jewel of our bicycle pedestrian uh, trail network here in Connecticut. And the person most responsible for doing that, converting it from a railroad, it was a railroad after uh, the canal had failed, and then the railroad became disused, and then it was converted to a multi-use trail. The person most responsible for that is a woman named Nancy Alderman. I don't know if some of you know Nancy Alderman. She's a local environmentalist. She runs a group called Environment and Human Health, uh, Inc. But in the 1980s, uh, she got the Federal Railroad Administration and some local leaders to preserve this right of way, which allowed this to become a trail in later years. And Nancy Alderman uh, is the um, descendant of two very prominent New Haven Jewish families, the Alderman family uh, and the Osterweiss family were prominent German Jews, members of Congregation Mishkan Israel. They lived in this in this neighborhood, uh, and they were manufacturers of cigars. New Haven was a big cigar manufacturing center, and that was uh, one of the industries that many German Jews were involved in. Oh, and, and Roland Osterweiss was her father. Roland Osterweiss is a very interesting guy. He's a Yale professor. He taught John Kerry and George W. Bush. He was a professor of rhetoric and history. He wrote one of the definitive histories uh, of New Haven, um, as well as some other very, very interesting uh, books about uh, history having nothing to do with New Haven, but that, that was the father of Nancy Alderman. Uh, 